Let's talk a little gossip, shall we? Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions. Disclaimer. Everything stated in this video is my opinion and my opinion only. And just like everything else in these cases we discuss here on this channel, everything is alleged. Hey, hi, editing me here. I don't know why this sounds like this. I checked my settings, I listened to it back the way that I always do, and as you'll see, this doesn't last the full video. I didn't change any settings in between each 30 minute clip, because that's what I do, I edit in 30 minute clips, and for some reason, it only does it during this first one, and because I checked the mic prior, I didn't catch it till I'd already talked for 30 minutes, and there was just no way that I was gonna go back and like try to remember everything that I said. It wouldn't have been genuine, so I just left it as is. Please just deal with it, because <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I checked everything. And again, it doesn't last the full, the full video. So, okay. So this latest drop from Brian Koberger's defense team was well over the 319 advertised pages on my thumbnails for the lives, because we also had the motions for the USB drive with a bunch of the supporting evidence to be sealed. We had the order of it actually being sealed, signed and approved, those kinds of things. And then we also went through the exhibit list and the witness list. Now this is going to be a public hearing on August the 29th, but for some reason, even though they're basically telling us in the 319 page document that they really are wanting to move the case to Ada County, again, personally, I'm not really telling you guys that I want y'all to go back and watch the lives because it was hours, it was three days, I, probably like 10 or 11 hours. It was a lot. And whenever I get on there and see my people on the chat and they're, we're having conversations, you can definitely get carried away. I definitely see why some of these lives can go for hours and hours and hours. But honestly, out of all of the information that we went over over those three days, these rumors that were in here from the survey takers were the most compelling. Not just because they're wild, and to me, it's so crazy that someone could hear the kind of things that I'm going to read to you guys and just leave it there. Not try to just, you know, grab your phone and go to Google and do a little five-minute search because you're bored at work one day. Nothing. You just left it this cray-cray in your head and didn't think <laughs> to do anything different to look any further. It just blows my mind what some people will just, like, latch on to and just be like, eh, that's good enough for me. <laughs> There's no way I could be that type of person. So we're going to read these. <laughs> I made myself a little drinky drink. I'm going to sip this while we're reading this. This is what it's made out of. Okay. These are crazy. Not only are you going to see rumors, hear rumors that have nothing to do with Brian, but just a bunch of cray-cray stuff. Okay, this very first one you guys are going to know, like, pretty much exactly. Okay. First one. He may have come from a family of crime and previous cases have been uncovered. We've only ever heard that about the Consolvises. I mean, some of the other victims, parents have like charges or whatever for stuff in the past and actually stuff that was going on at the time, which leads to a whole nother theory in itself that a lot of people grab onto. But when it comes to anyone deep diving into, it's really been the Consolvis family that the whole crime family thing has come from. I don't talk about that on this channel. Some other channels do. I haven't. Previous cases being uncovered, no. There was a case in Pennsylvania. His mom and dad had to go and testify in front of a grand jury, but they did it on separate days. And then they basically just came out and, yeah, no connections between that person and Brian. Any other cases in Brian, at least nothing that they're telling us. Now, there is a gag order. So, honestly, we could get to trial and they tell us that they found 10 other crimes. But I feel like if that was the case, they would have told us. Because we're questioning their narrative so much. I feel like if they really had something concrete, like confirmation that he did something else cray cray, we would have known the second that they knew. It wouldn't be something that they would hide. Mm -mm. Okay, the next one. I've heard that Koberger has been linked to other murders in Washington and Pennsylvania. I've heard they are railroading Koberger to put him away and the evidence was planted and he was being framed. One other one that I heard was that he was working with one or the other of the roommates. Okay, I'm not even going to really acknowledge too, too much of this one for the one simple fact. <laughs> this person's statement is a complete contradiction in itself. He can't, this person cannot sit here and claim linked to other things, worked with one of the roommates proving a connection, but then also claim the evidence was planted and framed and he's being railroaded. Those two things do not go together. <laughs> you just 
Yeah. Like, you wouldn't even stop and think, okay, well, I was told this, but then I was also told this, so maybe I should see which one is actually true, which one leans more towards being true. You're just going to leave it that crazy and discombobulated in your brain. See what I mean? <laughs> okay. Some speculation that Koberger committed a murder in Oregon, possible. The house was a party house, and a couple of people who died weren't supposed to be there. The boyfriend and girlfriend. Also, Koberger had commented about committing the perfect one in a paper. Okay. The only thing I remember about Oregon is the car. The crashed car that was left abandoned that came at a really crazy, t crazy time. Okay. It was a party house. We heard that from multiple people, but the very like first time in my memory that I remember hearing that it was a party house was from Olivia, Kaylee's sister, Olivia. She was in an interview. She was still pregnant. It, she was either wearing like a peach or a pink colored top. I want to say it was the one with the turtleneck. I can't be wrong. That's why I'm seeing it in my head. Whatever. Olivia was the very first person that I remember hearing party house from. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty much kind of true. Now, when it comes to people that weren't supposed to be there, Ethan was really the only one that wasn't supposed to be there because Anna did live there, but Ethan was spending the night. And this thing about Coburg, you know, the whole paper thing, I mean, I've talked about this before, but I can only do so much. Like I said, like, <laughs> I do what I can to try to make sure that most of the facts are out there, but my videos don't get anywhere near the kind of reach that all of the crazy, make no sense, insane videos do. They just don't. Like, you can go and look at the numbers and prove that. The true videos that are very factual really don't get as much reach at all. There's an audience for the more dramatic and sensationalized. That's a fact. The Reddit paper was not a self-done thing. It wasn't anything to do with him being a doctorate or getting his PhD or whatever the hell was happening. It had nothing to do with that either. This happened at the sales. It was a group project. And if you go in and you look at the actual like survey thing itself, it did not only have Brian's name on it. There was like at least two other students' emails and then also the professor's email at the sales .edu or whatever. So it wasn't like his own thing. It was a group project that was assigned to him. And I really, that's what I mean, guys. That's what I mean. Like these people heard that once and then, like, never heard anything else about it again to know that that's not what it was. Because there's another one in here that calls it, like, his thesis. No, it was a group project. They just left it at that. It's just crazy to me. I guess just because of the way my brain works, it, it just astounds me so much that people could just leave things so open-ended in their brains. Okay, the next one. That maybe one of the victims had rejected him and caused this with his criminal justice interest. He wanted to try to commit the perfect one. Now, again, if his attorney is standing up in court and claiming there's no connection, then at that point, there's no connection between him and the victims. So this couldn't be it because there's no connection between them. And every single time the consolaces have tried to tell us that there was some sort of like social media connection no matter which huge network was telling us or letting them tell us that, there would always be a disclaimer that they could not val validate the claims. They can't. And I'm going to do a video on this one specific thing, but there was an email that the channel Andrew D. Myers claims to have gotten from Steve Consolvis, where in this email he's claiming the state's having a hard time putting it together with Brian. Okay? You can't say things like that as the father of a victim. And expect for that not to get people's attention, especially if we already have so many questions. And this is a lawyer YouTube channel. So I don't think that he would be out here lying about getting this email from Steve Consolvis. And we all know that Steve Consolvis talks to pretty much anybody who will talk to him. Even now, after all this crazy stuff, he's... I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it alone. Anyway, that's important. Because we already know for a fact from these last few hearings that they really have, like, no evidence. And not just no evidence on Brian, guys. That means, like, no evidence for anyone else either. Because if it really is true the way that Cy Ray is, is bringing it to our attention in these hearings, that the very location and time-specific information is just not there, they cannot implicate Brian and they cannot implicate anyone else either. That's a huge, huge problem all the way around. Okay, the next one. The girls were party girls. Brian was studying criminology. See how much he could get away with. The party girl thing, again, I also want to kind of, like, hone down on this, too. They were at a bar drinking, so what? They stopped and got pasta and went home, okay? 
I don't know the last time they got to see each other. Kaylee was working from home at her parents' house. She was already not living at King Road, but her stuff was very much still there. Her stuff had not been moved out of that house yet. She was going on a trip before she was moving to Austin, Texas. She was going out of the country first. So she probably wasn't planning on moving stuff out of King Road until she was back from her vacation and she was actually moving to Texas into wherever she was actually going to be living. Okay. That's the reason why I don't believe they fell asleep in the same bed. I think they were just found together in Maddie's bed. I mean, I really think that that's how this is going to end up. Again, I could be wrong, but that's how I feel like it's going to end up. So when it comes to them being party girls, with Kaylee about to be graduating early, she just had like, I think a couple of things she had left to do, but the whole plan was to be graduating early, like in December. I don't feel like they were party girls enough to call them party girls. And them being out and drinking that night wasn't a big deal because she was seeing and hanging out with her best friend for like the first time in maybe like a few weeks possibly and she was about to be going out of the country on a vacation and she was doing her own thing and she was literally just trying to like go and surprise Maddie with her freaking car because she was proud of herself about the Range Rover okay does that mean party girl that they like to have drinks whenever they go out to dinner or eat at fancy restaurants or go on vacations no it really kind of doesn't and honestly, the, like, body cams and stuff of the parties, neither one of the girls were there in any of those, guys. Correction. Of course, we did see the one that had Xana actually speaking to the police officer. But in this scenario, I was thinking about just, like, Maddie and Kaylee. In my mind, I knew I needed to say something about Xana, but then y'all know how I just keep on going. So just wanted to make sure that you guys did know that I did know that we did have body cam footage showing Xana. A lot of people had the code to that house to go in and out and be there, even whenever not all of the girls were there. It's just a lot of people had access to the ins and outs of that house. A lot more than, than should had, you know. Like the music and stuff during the day with Kaylee and whenever the guy comes out and the cop like takes a picture of Kaylee's ID on his phone and everyone's asking a bunch of questions and stuff. Like, that's not really like a party, probably. That's probably, probably just like kids hanging out during the day with a bunch of music on. Like, us, just as a family, sometimes we'll just turn on the music loud just because we're all hanging out listening to the same song while we're all doing our own thing. It's not really a big deal to me. But they were also in college. I don't know. I just feel like the, the night that they went out wasn't really like a party girl situation. It was, I'm hanging out with my best friend and we're going to have fun because I'm about to be leaving and we're becoming adults and oh my gosh type thing. That's just my opinion. Okay, the next one. I just heard it was part of his research to commit these murders in a small town because he thought he could get away with it. And you're going to see that that's a reoccurring theme. He thought he can get away with it. He thought he was smart. He thought he could see what he could get away with. There's a lot of people with that thought process here. But the whole, like, small town thing, that came from his, like, internship interview. That he wanted to be able to use his knowledge of cloud-based forensics to really help, like, rural towns really get with the technology. To help them get hit with the technology. Because look what's happening. There are all these hacks and all this crazy stuff that's going on. Technology is bad because humans are bad. If humans had good intentions for the majority, then we wouldn't have to worry about it. Our lives would be a lot easier if we could just allow technology to do certain things. But technology is scary. So whenever Brian says he wants to help rural places get hit, basically, with cloud-based forensics, is that such a bad thing? Him wanting to help maybe level the playing field? If he wasn't a suspect right now, would that be too far-fetched of a thought? See what I mean? Next one, that he planned it out and that he would keep doing it if he wasn't caught, again, reoccurring. Next one, that he was a law student at WSU and he looked on the internet for how to do certain things. He was interviewing people for his thesis. Okay, that's the thesis one. No, criminology and law are two completely different things. And if you're in school for law or criminology, you are getting taught how to do certain things in a very expensive classroom lesson. You don't need to go on the internet for that. So that's kind of strange that that person, like, 
put that together. And then again, the thesis thing, you know, it goes back to this is actually a group project from DeSales. The next one. Someone said that he may have been snubbed by the girls at parties. Students that were killed were big partiers, and he had been to parties with them. That Koberger bragged about committing the perfect one and was taking criminal justice classes. Again, yes, criminology. The whole thing about him being snubbed by the girls. I'm going to say this. We know there was a pool party. We know from the very validated conversations that got released between Steve Gonsalves and TikToker Brad Norton that there was a pool party that Kaylee went to. Then we had Reverend Donna Serafina, her remote viewing, her psychic reading, however you want to describe what she does here. There was a pool party that she also saw in her mind. Then we also had proof after Brian's arrest that he was invited to a pool party by, I believe his neighbor's name was Christian. And there he met another guy, long black hair. He saw this guy later on, like on a hiking trail. And Brian got like really excited to see him, was happy to see him. But it took the guy a little bit to like realize where he even knew Brian from. Okay. Those kinds of behaviors and stuff like that have always been, again, in my opinion, just because I'm, you know, not too far away from 40 and I've lived life and been around a lot of people. It's one of the reasons why I kind of feel like Brian might be on like the Asperger spectrum a little bit. It seems like if he's really one of like the best students, but he's like a harsh grader because he expects like certain perfections and he's really OCD the way his neighbors say he's up at like three, four o'clock in the morning vacuuming, you know, that's like kind of like more proof he's up in the middle of the night, unable to sleep, maybe because of OCDs and stuff like that. That's not like an uncommon way to be. It's really not, and it's definitely not, like, a huge suspicious <laughs> way to be either. But I say all of those things because the pool parties were not the same pool parties. The one that Haley went to was some sort of indoor party, and I believe it was actually, like, a day or two before the pool party that Brian went to, and his pool party was an outdoor pool party. And one thing we learned from the interviews that Christian and the friend with the long black hair did on some of these, like, mainstream... Really, I think it was only like maybe one interview on one company, honestly. They kind of just like came out and talked and then nothing, which is the way that it should be whenever it's legit, right? Whenever that's the only thing that needs to be said about the situation, that's how it should be. One, two, maybe, and done. There's nothing else to say. The story's out there. It is what it is. There's nothing more. There's nothing less. It's just factually there. So the fact that the feds actually came and interviewed and talked to people at this party is important, but also proves Brian was there, because why else would they be interviewing anyone there? But even after that, and the feds interviewed the people at this party, and we know from the Gonsalves' conversation with Brad Norton that it's not the same party Kaylee went to, and Taylor can still stand up in court and state, no connections between my client and the victims. Sounds pretty valid. The next one, people who they thought was involved, but also that other roommates were involved, but that hasn't been proven. It's just a rumor. You can't tell my daughter otherwise. She has been on the roommate since, since day one, before we ever even knew Brian who? Yeah, no, she's been on the roommates forever. Rumors about other suspects. He frequented Mad Greek and stalking. Now the other suspect thing, I have done a video very specifically on this subject, all based on facts which is what we like to do here on this channel, okay? So one of the press releases, Chief Fry, literally states that he wants to speak to the occupants, meaning more than one, of the Hyundai Elantra that they later in the probable cause affidavit call suspect vehicle number one. Okay, we're not just going to forget that, all right? Not just that, but whenever they are talking in the court documents about, like, the Idaho rules, they mentioned ICR 16-1-8. And one thing that I learned, remembered learning back whenever I was in school for my criminal justice degree, was that whenever you cite laws and different criminal cases and stuff, there's a certain way to do it. And there's certain ways you're supposed to use commas and dashes. So to me, the fact that they're not saying ICR 16-1-3-8 is extremely telling to me because it's leaving in number two, which discusses co-defendants. Those two very factual things are the reasons why I'm not going to let that go until they prove it otherwise. And they're not doing that yet. 
Now, the whole thing about the Mad Greek is also kind of crazy. Like, cool, maybe he went to the Mad Greek, maybe he didn't. We don't really know. Just like we really don't know if he's actually vegan or not, because that rumor came from an aunt that hasn't been married into the family for quite some time prior to these murders happening. So we really don't know what she truly knows or not. And that's just the honest truth. Now, also, anyone that has access to the internet can easily go to Mad Greek and see that it is not a freaking vegan restaurant. I literally had to end up pulling up the menu on the live whenever we talked about this. Because I was like, I remember there being one vegan option. I don't think it's even on the menu anymore, if I can remember right from Thursday night. But they had like a vegan option pizza, and it's not even there. But that's the only vegan option they had. Guys, this is a Greek restaurant. It serves lamb. Yeah, baba, lamb, deliciousness, okay? They're not a freaking vegan restaurant. So I don't know why people kept acting like that. If his aunt is correct and Brian can't eat out of pots and pans that meat have touched, there's no way in shit he's walking into a mad Greek restaurant that serves baby lamb. Okay, no, this is not, no. <laughs> and Santa's already stood up in court in a huff and a tuff in a big old fit and said that the stalking rumors, both stalking stalking and social media stalking, were false statements. So there's that. Okay, next one. That there could be another person. Yep, everything I've just previously said, there's no reason to repeat it. Next one. I heard that Koberger had an obsession. Multiple people involved may have been connected with ritual killings of an animal. Okay, that would be the Buddy situation. I don't believe there was ever justice for Buddy. I don't think I did a video on that one. I don't even want to tell you guys to go and like search this. If you don't, I'll say this. Don't search on YouTube for information about Buddy the dog. Okay. Because you're going to get a lot of false information from big creators that have hundreds of thousands of views on their videos. Okay. Go to Google and type it in and look up a newspaper report. Because the people that are trying to connect Buddy to a portion of something else that might not even be connected to this are not telling y'all one very important thing. The part that they're trying to claim is their reasoning or receipts for their claims is because of something that looks like it could be Buddy the dog's collar in a photo that they show you. But in all facts, the collar that was on the dog whenever the dog was like, okay was found with the body and the owners have the collar. That's what I found whenever I did my research. Now, again, don't just take my word for it either, but I will just tell you, if you want to look at the buddy, the dog situation related to this case, just go to Google and look up a regular old innocent news article. That's probably the only time I'm going to tell you to do that. <laughs> but this statement also is sort of contradictorial to me because whenever you think of somebody doing something because of an obsession, they normally don't really work with other people. That's just my opinion. Anyway. Okay. The next one is speculation that the roommates are involved. Again, you can't tell my daughter otherwise. Next. Surprised the police do not do more investigations. I think frat boys may have been involved. Now, I'm not going to lie to the university. I'm eyeballing them with some for real side eye. There's a lot of stuff about that, especially a newer situation that we're going to talk about in a separate video. On top of everything else, it just makes it look like they really are trying to cover up some shit. And again, I'm from a small town where for a long time, the family that owned the college really ran shit until they were kind of ran into the ground is basically how the story goes. But I've seen this kind of corruption before and these kinds of cover-ups before. That's why I'm like, you guys got to do a better job at telling me that your story makes sense because right now I'm not, I'm not, I'm just not believing it. Anyway, news on the street. It was a really gruesome and vicious. Also heard by some people I know in jail that they have told me they have seen interaction with police in Coburger while in jail and says that police have seemed to be friendly to butter up with Coburger to try to get him to talk. Police here are doing an excellent job here on this case. That probably is actually happening honestly because we see that in other cases whenever they go to trial and then like stories and stuff start coming out that like they send certain jailers and certain people to work in certain halls because they want to get a certain person's attention to see if they can get them to open up like I, if I remember correctly during one of Gypsy Rose's like interviews or like I guess not even really official interviews or whatever I remember her like being on a couch and the officer is sitting sort of like in the hallway, so you can't really see him. 
But we were, like, told that they sent, like, one of their good-looking officers to go and sit and, like, stand security or whatever over the room so she didn't leave. And, like, purposely did that so that she would start flirting with him and, like, opening up. And she's, like, she just got, like, pulled in for her mother's body being found and this crazy crap that went on with her situation, right? And uh, Gypsy Rose is a whole other thing we talked about on here. We don't save that for later. But... She starts talking to him about all her Disney vacations and how spoiled she was growing up and all this other stuff. And I'm like, if they really do believe that Brian Koberger is the guy, of course they're sending cops that they think he might get along with to go and talk to him. Yeah, that's kind of normal, right? Next, we were told he sliced and diced and hung them from... Okay, that's 4chan. We need to keep in mind... That honestly, with them trying to tell us that Xana was on TikTok at 412 and them trying to tell us that the cameras didn't pick up a ball, a dog barking until 417, that they're literally giving us like an eight to nine ish minute window, honestly, because there's no way that a dog wouldn't have picked up on something going on and started reacting quicker than the 417 time frame. So maybe there's going to be more. I just don't understand how that's logically possible physically possible it doesn't make sense in any universe i can think of okay so the window that they're giving us is nothing so for that to be the situation that kind of stuff would take time that's why the gainesville ripper story even though we discussed it i discussed it because it showed the differences in this case in that case and the similarities and the difference is is that even though the gainesville ripper was able to do certain things like position the the, the bodies in very black dahlia like disgusting disturbing positions he had time to do so there wasn't like an eight or nine ish minute window like they're giving us here their timeline ruins their entire narrative i don't even think they realize that Next one. Don't know why he did it. There were some rumors that he stalked the girls, but can't say that's for sure. Well, we know now that that was a false statement. And I actually think that these surveys might have actually been completed for this portion for Latal County prior to that hearing. Because I think that he actually ended up like making sure that the survey was completed before it got shut down like there was like a weekend where ann taylor sort of just like got a bunch of stuff done so i don't know if i don't know if that's accurate this is how i feel the timeline went based off of when the state threw a fit and whenever the court actually ordered for the survey to stop i feel like ann taylor took advantage of that last weekend of freedom she knew she was going to have and really got it done that's why these rumors are coming from Latah county so i guess i can give a little bit of lenience but i can't also guarantee that these people that have these very false statements in their head actually watch the court hearings i can't because we do know that that one right there specifically was proven to be a false statement specifically Next one, the rumor that he was an ex of one of the female victims and I heard he had Tourette's. Okay, well, I remember thinking in the live, like, what would that have to do with anything? And like, really, I only started thinking about like my daughter because like sometimes she, she has this, some like a mild version of this and she'll make like certain movements or noises sometimes like in the middle of random stuff. And it, it really scares me whenever we're eating dinner. Because sometimes it'll be like a very bird-like noise where her neck will kind of like kind of come out and turn a little bit and she'll make like an actual like bird noise. So I was kind of like thinking about that. Like if somebody that had like Tourette's where they just kind of like blurted out stuff or blurted out noises, that would make it even more make no sense if nobody heard anything. If this person really had something like that where they couldn't help themselves. I just don't see why that would matter when it comes to rumors of this situation. Because it's not like it's a mental disorder that would cause you to just like snap one day and do this kind of thing. That's very strange. I just found it very strange that that one was one of the ones that stuck to this person's mind. Next, he fit the description and was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He tried to leave the country. Okay, that one, that entire freaking statement is about Jack Walter. Which, by the way, he didn't leave the country. That was a rumor that was not ever proven to be true. But that entire statement, he fit the description and was in the wrong place at the wrong time, meaning he was in the grub truck footage and he walked the girls to the grub truck from the corner club. 
And he sort of did fit the description because he's sort of the height from what I can remember the height. He's got like brownish hair in a dark room. It would look darker, wrong place, wrong time. The grub truck situation prior to the situation happening back at King road, he walked the girls there, but then they like took off without telling him bye. And he looked kind of like surprised that they took off the way that he did. Okay. But the whole thing, this entire statement is about Jack Showalter, And this person thinks it's about Brian Koberger. See what I mean? Next one. I heard that it was two other people, but they found his DNA at the scene. Okay. So we also need to remember the fact that there's three additional male DNAs that have been unidentified that were mentioned in court. Okay. That's a huge problem because they're not telling us a lot about pre Brian. We know that they surveilled someone enough to get a cigarette butt and do like DNA of that. But then we also have three unknowns. So what were those other people all about that they felt needed to be surveilled before they ever knew about Brian? And then why, if they were literally doing all this extra stuff with these other people, why didn't they check those other three DNAs? Too many unanswered questions. The next one, I've heard that the defense isn't sure who it is, or maybe the roommates are involved, or there may be more than one person. I think this person probably means the state, but then again, the defense might just know that their client is innocent without knowing who the guilty party is. That's true too, I guess. And again, the roommate thing, some people really believe that my daughter, again, is very much one of them. And we go back again to more than one person and look at this next one. Look at this next one. He had someone else in the car with him. Hmm. He killed the people and there was someone else helping him. Again, more than one person. His roommate said Koberger was acting strange around the time of the event. He didn't have a roommate. He did not have a roommate. There was a second bedroom in the apartment, but he did not have a roommate at the time that this happened. He is guilty. He did it. And the evidence was found at the crime scene. That's somebody's opinion. And really the only thing that was found at the crime scene was the DNA, which seems to be the most questionable part of this entire thing. He knew one of the people in there. No, there's no connections whatsoever. He tried to connect with one woman. No, there's no connections. He was aware of where the girls were at all time, been in and around the house a couple of times. There's no connection. If there's no connection and no stalking, then there's no connection and there's no surveilling either. Because in order for one to be surveilling somebody, there still has to be some sort of connection somewhere and it would be in the electronics. You can't just be surveilling somebody and then not having a way to actually watch that surveillance. There would still be a connection. That would be the connection. There's no connection. Rumors that there was a second person responsible and rumors of following the girls online and lots and lots of parties at the house because it is a university town. More people with more people being involved. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> There's just no way this is a one person situation. I'm just going to leave it at that for now. This whole online thing, of course, has already been proven to not be true by the state itself. The next one says he was obsessed with one of the girls at the house. No connection. No stalking online, no stalking in person. Okay, the next one says, I heard that Brian tried to hit on one of the girls at the restaurant. Brian Koberger said, am I the only one getting arrested when the cop picked him up? Again, that is something that only Brian Inton has come out and stated. And whenever he asked the police about it, they could not validate it. But they also didn't say, no, it's not true, which is also, you know, interesting. But again, not something that's been validated to be true. Now, I will state that Brian Inton, something that I didn't know, Brian Inton apparently was told prior to the arrest that they were getting ready to arrest someone in Pennsylvania. So he left his home in Florida. I think he was in Florida at the time. I remember listening to this in like some interview he did about it. I think on the mile higher I think on mile higher, I think. Anyway, he got the call and so they flew up to Pennsylvania. So he was on the ground before the arrest. So, I mean, as much as I want to keep saying that's not validated, that's not validated. I really have a lot of questions about there being more than one person here if Brian Koberger is involved at all. I don't know. It's just not adding up to me. It's just still not adding up to me. It's just not.
And again, the whole following the girls online thing, again, not true. The next one states he was stalking one of the victims. We already know that's not true. He was delusional about being in a relationship with one of the girls. He would still have had to have had some sort of stalking connection, some sort of online connection, some sort of something connection to where he could feed that Delulu. You know what I mean? So no, no, no. We're pretty sure that he did it. Pretty sure he was stalking them, checking the places they went. No, no. One of the girls had spurred his romantic advances. There's no connection. No connection at all. He went in the house and killed three girls and one gentleman. He was dating one of the girls and she stopped seeing him. He came back and killed them all. No connection. Now, I know the, probably the reason why a lot of people keep thinking that he's some sort of ex or whatever is because before we were basically told the truth, you know, a lot of us questioned already if it was true or not. But whenever they finally came out and stated it, we all have to think back to whenever they first started telling us about possibilities that there was a guy that apparently Kaylee did go on a date with and he talked to her like crap. And she was so shocked because Jack had never talked to her like that. And it was just such like apparently some sort of culture shock to her that this guy said these things to her. And I guess because of all of the rumors about Brian Koberger and like the birthing hip girl, which you know what, we just not even going to go there anyway. They probably thought that that guy that they were talking about that talked like shit to Kaylee was Brian Koberger because of everything else. And they never thought to go in and differentiate, see what was true or not. That's the only thing I can think of about comes to like why that keeps being like an ongoing mishmashed theme. You know what I mean? Him sleeping or being obsessed with one of the girls and him stalking them. No. His relationship with the victims attracted to one. No, there's no proof of any of that. I've heard something along the lines. He had a personal grudge against them, but don't know if that's for sure. See, that came from that interview, I bet, that Steve Consalvis did where he was driving around Kaylee's Range Rover. And he basically said in front of everybody and they mama that Brian did this because he was jealous of Maddie and Kaylee. Like, that's literally his word, that this was a, a jealousy situation. There's no proof of that. There's just no proof of any of that at all. I heard he was stalking two of the victims. Also heard he went back into the house after the murders were committed. I also heard that the roommates were in on it. Okay, again, you can't tell my daughter otherwise. Now, this whole he went back to the house after the murders were committed thing, I really do question that because... <laughs> I mean, I've talked about this before. I don't know why I'm like, probably because I'm tired of talking about it. Okay. When it comes to the probable cause affidavit, they did not have him at the location at the time of the crime, right? They don't. That, that's been proven in court already by the experts that have seen the discovery. They don't. But what we do have is a probable cause affidavit that says that Brian Koberger left his apartment at nine o'clock in the morning and drove back to the area of King Road, hung around at King Road for 10 to 12-ish minutes, and then was back to his apartment by 9.32. So he made the entire round trip and was able to hang out for a few minutes for 32 minutes time. Okay. Now, we do have this like imaginary person, and yes, imaginary person is the correct terminology to use here, that came out and tried to say that he was friends with one of the guys from the Banfield footage, and that in the Banfield footage, before the cops got up close to them, they had other sorts of paraphernalia on them, and so they ditched it in the grass somewhere before the cops got too close to notice, is the story. And that while they were there, it was after the sun was up and it was around nine o'clock in the morning. And while they were there, they saw a guy that sort of fit Brian Koberger's description, wearing all black, sort of like in the field, looking towards the King Road house. Now, I do find this really interesting. And I've said this before. This is nothing that my normal viewers have not heard, probably more than three times by now, that I find this interesting because we had rumors before we had any actual valid information that there were people out walking around in the neighborhood as early as eight o'clock in the morning, maybe even a little earlier, we don't know, but around like 8.45ish, 8.50 in the morning that the front door of King Road was reportedly opened. And that was being talked about like early, early on within like just a few days of the incident. So you have to take all of those things into consideration because they all match each other. They all go together. 
but you have to really try to figure out what's true and what's not. Because if you want to believe that somehow Brian Koberger was alerted to this situation ahead of the cops, then you have to believe a portion of what WSU Kim says. And just like Melissa Jade, I do believe the basics of what Kim says. I don't believe the bullshit. I believe the basics. It's her story constantly changing that bothers me. But because the police have already told us, and it's also been validated by the consolvices, at least by Christy, that several people at least were called over to the King Roadhouse before the cops got there, before the cops were even called. It's very hard to try to keep track of what sounds plausible and what sounds like people creating a narrative out of truth. It's very difficult. Okay, the next one. He was a teacher assistant at WSU and he had issues with women there. One of the restaurants where he ate, it was where one of the girls worked. Again, we've already talked about the Mad Greek. We're not going to cover that again. This is why I have a kind of a big issue. Well, it's not why. It's one of the reasons why. I have a big issue with the way that Idaho handled this because this was an off-campus non-sorority house, right? They handled it in ways that you would swear this house was smack dab in the middle of campus, all right? Brian actually worked at WSU. He lived in actual, like, campus assigned housing for TAs. And they're not, like, doing anything compared to the cray-cray stuff that Idaho is doing. And that's why I find it really strange, right? One of the reasons, anyway. It's like... The behaviors are 180 in my opinion. I, I don't know. Anyway, now the issues with women there thing, we don't have any proof of that at all, at all at WSU. As a matter of fact, if any of the rumors about anything that happened at WSU are true, it was a male professor that he was having issues with, not females. And according to what we're hearing, he graded both males and females pretty harshly. He wasn't sexist in the way that he graded harshly. He was harsh on everyone. So, you know, like, again, it's just like stuff that really isn't true. No one thought to dig a little bit deeper. I've heard that he had a bad history with women and everyone is thinking that has something to do with why he did what he did. He worked in the same building with me. I just didn't know him, but a friend did and said he was strange and would just stare at you. Now we do have a story from back whenever he was like, I think in elementary or middle school, he had a crush on a girl. He was still chubby. Okay. I really feel like they exaggerate this story because the way that the mom of the girl like told it, She's like, he was always telling her how beautiful she was. And it was just creepy and weird. And I'm like, because he's got a crush on your daughter. Like he didn't do anything inappropriate. He would stare at her sometimes because she was pretty and he was looking at her. And sometimes maybe he would just get like lost in, you know, whatever. Like that's not an abnormal situation, especially whenever you're like first crushing on people. It's not like we are all weirdos. Okay. <laughs> but you can't sit here and say something like he hates women and he doesn't respect women at all. You can't do that because his female professors think he is awesome. Best student that they've ever had, especially Ramslin or whatever her name is. And she's done like some for real serious work in the criminal world. And she thinks he's top chart. So no, this statement doesn't even make any sense. It's completely false from everything that we've at least been told. He doesn't respect women at all. Kind of obvious from the way he's treated his professors and the people he works with, his fellow grad students. We haven't really heard anything from fellow grad students. Now, again, there is like an in class with Koberger episode of a podcast on iHeartRadio that I'm going to listen to. But other than that, that's really kind of like it. Anybody else that was in class or in school at all with Brian Koberger didn't have anything bad to say about him. There was even a guy that would go on night runs with him because he felt safe running with Brian Koberger at night in the dark. See what I mean? It's like the opposites actually out there, but that's not the kind of stuff that was being told. It's crazy. The other university he was working at, they had problems with him too. He never worked at another university. I don't know why he picked those victims. He just stalked the one girl. She just kind of ignored him and didn't engage in their communication. He was trying to communicate with her and she didn't respond. So he stalked her. That's not true at all. Prosecution's already stated that's not true. That's what the videotapes are showing in the pings on his cell phone. No, it's not. 
This person has a huge, huge section on this page and literally everything that they have stated is the opposite of what there's proof of. Literally everything. That's why the videotapes are showing and the pings of his cell phone. No, his social media, a lot of people on Reddit found disturbing posts from years back. You mean again, the very public post? of the, the very, like, group project that was very um, school assigned, that one. Unless they're talking about the visual snow stuff. Now, it's actually interesting because some people are now claiming that those are fake. So maybe we should dig. We might dig. Okay, the next one. The drive-by stalking, he had a temper and stopped them. He was studying criminal law. Drive-by stalking? I mean, see, that's what I mean. Like whenever someone hears that he was in the area 12 times prior to this, most of those people don't understand that those cell phone towers can be like a 10 to, to 20 mile radius. He could literally still be in Pullman and end up on the cell phone tower that's in Moscow because they're that like short amount of miles apart. So no. <laughs> okay. The next one. Somehow he was shunned by them. There are different things from his past, his behaviors before he came here. He attended school in criminal justice. That's what he was studying at Washington state university. He lives back in Pennsylvania. Girls that grew up with him stalked. Don't know if that's the right word. He didn't have healthy relationships with women. We don't really know that. We just don't. And the whole like shunned by them thing, there's no proof at all that there's any connection between him and the victims. Again, like we've said a thousand times already. And yeah, there, there were some crazy stuff like in his past, but not like crazy enough. I really just kind of question more his childhood. Now I've said before that stuff that happened to him as a kid is not an excuse whenever you're a grown man and you can like cognitively think. And I stand by that. I stand by that. But I honestly am not seeing the narrative that the police are laying out for us. So I'm really curious actually about Brian Koberger's childhood because we do know that he was a H addict. Okay. And he had to go into rehab and he lost a whole bunch of weight and like improved his life and came out of that at like 17. I think it was right. You don't just do that at that age. That's not what you like initially jump into. Okay. So that really makes me just curious as to what could have possibly maybe happened to him as a child to where that's what he decided to just jump into. There's a guy on YouTube, you guys know, most of you guys know his name is Willie and he's from that area and he sort of has described like the rug scene, right? The vitamin scene, you know, YouTube's got to be done with their YouTubies boo boo. So he's, he's described it and basically it was like, regular old little hippie stuff until all of a sudden that kind of harder stuff just sort of like infiltrated out of nowhere and it got really bad. So I guess there's a possibility that maybe he was, he just said yes to doing something crazy and became addicted to it. And it's one of those rare things where it wasn't like a, you know, a, an incline into insanity and he just jumped feet first, but that's really strange rare and very strange but just the simple fact that he was able to like come out of that <laughs> and lost a bunch of weight and gained a bunch of confidence and went to college and found his path and started doing all these things I mean, that kind of stuff is really important guys like some people might not think so but it is it actually is very very much important the next one says maybe a second person involved one of the girls complained about being stalked but no action was taken no it wasn't that no action was taken it was looked into whenever it was first brought to the public's attention and the police couldn't find literally anything about it there was one guy that worked at like some vape shop or something like that and he said that the girls had come in like a, a group of girls had come in with kaylee and it was like mentioned and it was sort of insinuated that it was kaylee that had the stalker but this guy I was just probably some guy talking honestly and it was oj simpson's old attorney that brought the whole stalking thing out to begin with just for the cops to come out in the very beginning and tell us there's no proof that she was being stalked whatsoever it wasn't until a few months ago that we found out that brian koberger apparently didn't stalk anyone in the situation but we knew from the very beginning that kaylee wasn't stalked there was no proof so i don't really know why for the people that like 
believe Brian is actually guilty. I don't know why whenever the state came out and said that he wasn't stalking the victims, it was such a surprise. We already knew Kaylee wasn't being stalked. So this isn't too far of a jump from that. There is no stalking in any of this. Apparently at all. For now, anyway. One story that I heard before he was apprehended that these women had a business going on on the internet that was sexual in nature and that one of their clients was displeased with them. Yeah, this is really what's ma what makes me really shocked whenever I see Steve Gonsalves hanging out with JLR because he was one of the ones that was pushing the fact that the girls had a fan page is how I'm going to put it. And that's never been validated. Like I just said, he was pushing out the fact that, but it was never validated. It was never true. I think it was just suspected because they're beautiful. I think that's really all that it was. I have never seen any proof of that. And if it really truly existed, there would be actual proof of it out there. And there's not. It's just like this huge rumor that went around for literally no reason at all. Next one. Maybe he didn't want one of the girls leaving town, but there's no connection between him and Kaylee. So next one is just heard lots of different rumors. And that's basically where the person left it. And it's probably smart. I heard numerous things and left it there. Smart move. Too intense for me to repeat. Even smarter move. <laughs> Too many rumors to answer this question. Smart answer. Next one. Mostly really crazy stuff. But other than that, not a whole lot. Isn't a bunch of really crazy, crazy stuff actually a whole lot of stuff? <laughs> this person just doesn't want to answer, which again, smart move. I have read and seen a ridiculous amount of false information on TV and online, but I would love to know what actually this person believes is false. That he's not stalking the girls or that he was? Curious. This one states, I'm a student. I've heard a lot, don't know what to believe. I can imagine you've heard a lot, a lot, honestly. The next one states, there's a lot of discussion about his psychological makeup, a master's in working on a PhD in criminology. That's a fact. The rumor is he's going to write a book about it. And the reason is to write a book. You can't make money on a book. If you're the one who did the crime. At least that's how it's supposed to be, right? He gets love letters from women in prison. If you switch prison for the right word and put it jail, it's a fact. This exact same one goes on to state what the defense attorney wants is to make sure he doesn't get executed. That's a rumor. I mean, she apparently wholeheartedly believes that Brian Koberger is innocent, putting her hand on his shoulder and all. So there are tons of rumors in this town, knee deep in rumors. The worst rumor was that the murders were engineered by a woman. A psychic in Texas accused her of murder. The woman's being sued and there's court facts about it. There is. There is. There's lots of court documents. The rumor is the history professor did this at the University of Idaho. Yeah. The whole thing, if you guys don't know, there's a TikTok psychic that is blaming, and I believe Rebecca Schofield's name was already in this document from whenever we did like the actual live reading sessions of the whole thing. But she's claiming that Rebecca Schofield, a professor, was in a relationship with Kaylee and whatever happened between her and Kaylee is the reason why she like paid Jack D to do this or some crazy stuff. Her, her, her whole thing is wild. All right. We're going, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> we're going to talk about it real soon. I think the next one says I've heard rumors that the roommates might be, or could be involved in about Koberger's past and history. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's talk about everything in there. I've heard that the girl that he really liked, that he had stabbed her the most and the worst. That's the biggest thing I've heard. There are so many little things. Well, I remember one of the things that the Consolvis said was that Kaylee's injuries seem to be a lot more brutal than Maddie's. So this seems to be just something, something that this person put together based off of something that the family stated and who the suspect actually is that they have in jail and really nothing more. The next one heard rumors about drug deals or that he stalked the victims. No proof of stalking heard that it was possibly a rug case. And now I'm going to have to start using a little bit of YouTube bees. The next one says there was a vitamin deal gone bad. And there's a lot of people that believe that this could be that 
There really is a crap ton of people that believe that. And honestly, if you sit down and you look at a lot of receipts for a lot of the theories and you don't go into the insanity parts of it, you can see why just a handful of things that can add up together really can make themes, you know, make it seem very possible. It's very easy honestly, to like create a path for people to follow. The, the problem is that most people don't try to continue that path with their own information. They just take whatever they're told and run with it without any, you know, verification of anything. And that's just so scary these days. The next one says, I've heard all kinds of things from rug deals gone bad or to his being so smart that he thought he could get away with it. Everyone in the whole country has heard it. Yeah, there's been a bunch of rumors everywhere. I feel like I remember it was a home that had a lot of weekend and night parties. Yeah. And that he had potentially been there once or twice at their home. There's no connection. So even if he would have been at one single party that was thrown there, if there was any connection to that whatsoever, they wouldn't be able to come out here and state there's no connection. They couldn't. The next one says, I guess I don't pay much attention to that. One that really bothered me was the roommates that were not killed. Dylan and Bethany survived that they were talking during the murder that they, the two surviving roommates were involved somehow. There were drugs. It was disturbing. There's nothing in the information released that alludes to them having any involvement in the crimes that the police department was corrupt and the prosecutor's office, some conspiracy about cover up. It's silly and stupid. I don't believe it. Well, don't be so naive, but for someone who doesn't pay much attention, this person show <laughs> had a lot to say. Now, what I do find crazy is that even though this is like a survey taker, they couldn't do better whenever they went through to like put this in this document to make sure that Dylan's name was spelled correctly. It's kind of just ridiculous, honestly. The next one states, there have been rumors about the university and cops being involved. Yeah, the university, I'm totally questioning. Totally questioning. On the cops, I think they're just ignorant and incompetent. Honestly. I heard that it was a party house and it had a lot of people coming and going. That's a fact. That's a fact. I was aware of the victims. I had met two of them and they were scared of him. See, that doesn't even make any sense because to sit here and say that you were aware of the victims doesn't mean that you knew the victims. And if you were just simply aware of somebody, you're not someone that they would come up to and start like telling all of their fears to. That doesn't even make any sense. Plus no connection. So this person is full of it and just trying to sound important, I guess. We are spending millions of dollars to defend him and it's a waste of tax dollars. That's your opinion based off of a lie. I'm telling you right now, this whole, I was aware of them and I met them and they were scared of him. This person's a liar. Ugh, I cannot stand idiots like that. Speculation is that he drove over there and left his phone. When was it ever said he left his phone anywhere? Like the biggest thing about this is that the phone like went off network after he left his apartment. Meaning he didn't leave it in his apartment. He didn't take it with him and leave it at the house. He didn't even go that direction. He went the opposite direction according to his alibi. Where in the world did this person hear this from? The people drove away. Left and went back that morning remembering he forgot the sheath. I see where they think that if they think that Brian's guilty. I definitely see where they get that from. The next one says that he might have thrown the knife in the river. There's a lot of people that think that because of the direction that they're claiming that the car went in the PCA that there is so much evidence against him. <laughs> no, there's not literally way back in the beginning of this. They stated that the strength of their case against Brian Koberger rested on the knife sheath DNA that of which they are planning on filing a motion of limity in order to exclude all of the IgG work that actually got them to the guy that they claimed that did this that matches the DNA. None of it makes any sense. There is speculation that some people heard him when he started attacking them and that one of them tried to fight back. You mean the PCA where it says that Kaylee heard, uh, I mean that Dylan heard what she believes to be Kaylee say that someone was here. That's probably where that came from. And the whole one of them tried to fight back thing that probably came from what we heard from the Consolvices, but also something that we'd heard about Xana before. 
He goes on to say, also, someone said something about him turning off his phone or off the network when he was driving near the area. No, not near the near, not near the area at all. The phone literally goes off network around like the Pullman area and it doesn't show anything at all about him going that way to Moscow. He goes the other way. And like my directions are me like looking at Google Maps in my brain. Because for him to have gone to Moscow from his apartment in Pullman, he would have had to have gone this way and gone on the Idaho Moscow Highway. And he and his people are saying no, that he went this way and went west towards the park area. Not that he went to the park, but towards the park area, an area that he is very commonly like known to go to. So there's that. Some people think he made it look like he drove to Clarkston, Washington, so it wouldn't look like he was in Moscow and there was a coffee shop that saw his car in Clarkston. This person's timeline is so screwed up. Him going down towards wherever the coffee shop or whatever was, was later on, and it doesn't necessarily state that he stopped at the coffee shop. It says a camera at the coffee shop sees the vehicle. He's on camera walking around and shopping at the Albertsons. This is not at the four o'clock in the morning time of the crime either. This person has their timeline all screwed up. Yeah, for real. The last one states that the house was a bit of a party house and heard that the neighbors saw an identical year and model of the car of Koberger's parked outside the house the night of the murders. We have not heard a single time that anyone is claiming to have seen Brian Koberger's car parked outside of the house. I've never heard that before ever. Oh, besides the like one little interview that Steve Consolvis did, but that's like literally it. Well, that's it for the rumors that they had in this document. I still have a little bit left, so I'm going to get this topped off while I'm editing and then we're doing fried catfish tonight. It's going to be so good. I cannot wait, but I want to know what you guys think about all these rumors. It's crazy to me that people would just allow their brains to stop there. Now, granted again, I'll say again. This part of the survey with the Laytel County residents was completed before the halt, from what I'm understanding, which would mean completed before Prosecutor Bill Thompson stood up and angrily told us that those were false statements. Okay, so I'll give them that. But I'll say this. Just by chance, if there are any of you poor, poor souls in Laytel County that have questions about something in this case, email me. I will do my absolute best to show you the receipts and the facts to the answer that you have a question for. I'll use it for a video, keeping you obviously anonymous, but I will use it for a video because if you are asking and you are a local getting all of this information pretty much as firsthand as firsthand can get at this point, then probably a bunch of other people have the same questions. So I'll just use it like that. But feel free, email me. I will point you in the right direction. I will give you the most factual answer that I can. And if I don't know, I'm going to straight up tell you I don't know. Because some of it, I just don't know. But again, I want to know what you guys think about this stuff. This mixed up mishmash of rumors where some of this stuff has nothing at all to even do with Brian. Again, this is probably the most relevant part to this entire 319 page document. And that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you like the way that I present this information and give my opinion, please do not forget to leave a like on the way out and subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed already. See y'all.